Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I look slightly less like a discount version of Sam Bankman Freed today. The reasoning for that being that I am about to go out. Uh, this is actually my last time going out in New York City, so I'm actually in a bit of a rush to get the night started, so let's make this video quick. Today we'll be talking about actual serial execution, so let's get it started. Okay, I have whipped out the iPad and I've whipped out my dick, let's get started. So actual serial execution, what is it? Well, basically in the past few videos what we've done is we've talked a lot about weak forms of isolation. The reason being that actually achieving transactions that don't step on each other's toes and cause race conditions is not only hard to do, it's also expensive to do. It makes the performance of the database much slower. And so when actually trying to achieve full serializability or isolation, we need to make sure to take care to actually keep performance as good as possible or else our databases are going to be pretty useless at scale. So one attempt at doing this has actually come around a little bit more recently, and it's known as actual serial execution. The reason I've put voltdb in parentheses is if you're curious to see an actual example of this in the wild, you should look up voltdb. It's basically doing exactly what I'm going to describe in this video. So what is it that actual serial execution actually means? Well, for starters, basically, CPUs are faster than they used to be. And so now, as opposed to having to necessarily rely on multi-threading, one thing that you can actually do in order to make sure that transactions are just running in order and not running at the same time is literally running them in order and not running them at the same time. So all we're doing is running every single thing possible on just one core. And so there are some limits to this, right? Because obviously if we were doing everything in a multi-threaded way, that allows us to get a lot of performance gains on multi-core processors. However, you know, putting everything on one core is going to require some extra work on our end to make sure that things are fast enough. So there are a couple things that are going to limit the performance of your system if you're running everything on one core. So the first thing is going to be using a disk, right? I've drawn this picture of a hard drive many times over, and the fundamental issue with disks is that they are slow. We've got this metallic seeking disk, and as a result, it's just going to be a lot slower than using something like an SSD, or perhaps even better, literally keeping all of your data in memory. So we've got a couple of things here. The first thing is that we should be running pretty much our actual serial execution on a database that keeps everything in memory. And it's got some pros and some cons that come with that. The first thing is that it's going to be faster, right? We can use our hash index, or if we want support for range queries, we can use a self-balancing binary search tree based index, like a red black tree, an AVL tree, something like that. But it comes with the cons of A, having far less space, right? Memory is more expensive, so most computers don't have as much of it. And B, and more importantly, the data is not as durable. I didn't even write that there, but you know, it's something that I realized. You can use a write-ahead log, but then now you're writing to disk again, and that slows things down. The other important thing we're gonna to touch upon a little bit more is that the network is slow, right? So what is it that you're actually conveying to a database? Well, of course, there's some data that has to be written, but if you're just running you know, a certain complicated query, actually sending that query to the database itself can be slow. So let's imagine that you know we're YouTube and we have this basically SQL script, right? Subscribe to channel.sql. And we're sending that over the network from our server to the database. And what if that you know script is effectively long enough that maybe it's two kilobytes in size? Compared to the actual data, which might just be like literally putting uh, one name in the subscriber column of a channel, the actual script itself can be a lot of data. And network bandwidth is obviously going to be a lot slower than just running instructions off of a CPU. So it's very important to minimize the amount of data that we're sending over the network. So how can we do that? Well, basically, in order to do this, we would use something known as stored procedures. So if you've heard of stored procedures, it's probably actually in a negative light. The reason being that generally speaking, you don't need to use these. Stored procedures are basically when, you know, before you even start running your database, running your application, you send a bunch of SQL functions, or the functions could really be in any language, to your database saying, here are the types of commands that I'm going to tell you to do, and when I want to invoke these commands, all I'm gonna do is, you know, send over a parameter, right? So, you know, uh, we're gonna basically call the function and we're gonna give it its arguments. So for example, if we wanna add inventory to a certain product, maybe we have the SQL script for that already preloaded onto the database, and what we would do is send over something like the product ID and the quantity, right? And so that way, that's a lot less data that we're sending over the network than the entire SQL script to add the inventory with the product ID and quantity hard-coded in, right? The product ID is probably just literally a number, so 32 bits, and the quantity is another number, so 32 bits, compared to, you know, however many characters that script might actually be. Okay, so 
what are the advantages of the stored procedure? Well, of course, like I mentioned, it's less data to send over the network. And that's hugely important when every single thing that we're sending over the network, every single write that we have to do is bottlenecking all of our other writes because they're only occurring on one single thread. On the other hand, stored procedures themselves are not great to use. The reason being that just for a developer, they're kind of a pain in the ass. It's annoying to kind of keep these in line with your other code because you know it's held on the database. It's not as easy to check into your version control system. It's not as easy to deploy these in a good way, you know, especially if you have multiple instances of a database, if you have replicas or anything like that. It's not so easy to you know kind of send all of these stored procedures to all of them. But in conclusion, guys, basically the general gist of this is we know the underlying assumption of how we're achieving isolation is we have to do it on one core. So what's every single possible optimization that we can do in order to make those reads and writes on that single core as fast as possible? The slower the reads and the writes, the more delayed that every other operation becomes because they're effectively all just enqueued on this single core. Anyways, guys, I know it was a short video, but I got to get out of here and get drunk. So have a great night and I will hopefully see you soon.